your light, let it shine for all. Let your good deeds glow for all to see, so that they will praise your heavenly Father. That means when we love God, He shines out of us like a bright light. Then everyone around us can see His light and say, Wow! God is amazing! Kids, welcome back for the third day of VBS. I'm Pastor Matthew, and we're going to have a fun time today in our next skit called Shine for Jesus. And today, the four of us that are going to be a part of it is me, of course, Miss Lisa, Olivia, and Miss Judy. I hope you have fun, because it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Did you have a good weekend? Did I ever. My dad and I built a treehouse and a climbing wall in our backyard. It was awesome. A climbing wall? Why on earth would you want a climbing wall? A treehouse, I can understand. But a climbing wall? Isn't that dangerous? But that's why it's fun. I like pretending I'm a secret agent trying to recover a stolen artifact from the ancient tombs of Egypt. Okay. Hi, Ellie and Roxanne. What are you guys talking about? Oh, I was just telling Ellie about the cool stuff my dad and I built in our backyard. What did you do this weekend? Well, my parents and I collected food from our neighbors and took it down to the food pantry. 
I love meeting new people, and I also love helping, so it was great. Wow. I wish I was as outgoing as you. Meeting new people is scary for me. I could never, ever collect food from my neighbors. Hey, guys. Do you want to know what I did for my weekend? My teacher from church took me to the nursing home so I could tell them jokes. And they laughed and laughed. It was so much fun. And it was great seeing them feel better when I told them that. Oh, man. We hoped. Well, Anna was telling us about collecting items for a food pantry. That doesn't seem like fun to me or going to a nursing home. Mm. I'm just not that interested in those things. Me either. I wish I could do something to help others mm. like you two. But I'd just rather stay at home and work on my art projects. Well, that sounds like a way to help others. What do you mean? Well, you could make cards for people in the hospital to cheer them up. Oh, or you can make thank you cards for the volunteers and take it to the church to thank them for the work they're doing. Thanks, guys. I never thought about how God could use my talents to help others. But those are all great ideas. Well, then what about me? Making cards sounds boring. Hmm. Well, what about teaching other kids how to skateboard? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can tell them about the skateboard ministry we have here at the church. What an awesome way to invite people to God. I agree. Whenever we use our unique talents and interests to serve others, then we let our light shine in believers. That sounds so cool. I never thought about my dangerous habits being useful for God. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. And you know what? When we work together in different ways, it helps us let our light shine the brightest. That's right, Clyde. And who knows? Maybe someone will trust in Jesus because they see our service and want to know more about Him. How awesome would that be? That would be amazing. Well, thanks for the input, guys. I'll try it. Yeah, and maybe we can even start a rock climbing group or a parachuting group or even a bike racing group. Yeah, sure, buddy. Y'all, that would be awesome. The possibilities are endless. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hey everyone and welcome back to day three of Vacation Bible School Crafts. So today's our final day and we're going to be doing luminaries. So our Bible story today talks about how we are the light of the world and we have to take our light out and, and shine. Um, so we're going to have these luminaries and Jenny's going to talk a little bit about our supplies here as far as the paints and, and markers and such. So this was the other craft that we kind of hinted at earlier in our previous day that we were supposed to use those awesome watercolor kits that we were so excited about sending you guys. They do not work on this um, medium, just so you know. Yeah. So again, I did mine with the basic Sharpie marker. Um, it's going to show up really pretty when we cut the light on. Um, Christy is using the acrylic paint as well. This is also one of those things where you can use any type of, of paint or paint markers or a Sharpie marker. We're going to include some type of marker in your kit. We're not sure what that looks like yet. Um, but either way, kiddos, y'all will have a great time with it. Again, Sharpie marker um, warning. Parents, watch the kiddos with it because it can get real dangerous real quick. <laughs> so you'll see on the cup that um, we've already punched the holes in there so that we can put the pipe cleaner. And this is going to act as your handle. So we're going to put the um, pipe cleaner in there and just, you know, stick it just a little bit and take it and fold it up on itself and then you can kind of twist it. Like I said, it's just going to make it a handle for the luminary. And then you want to do the other side as well. And definitely let the paint dry before because I didn't and I'm getting a little bit of paint on me. But again, um, put the pipe cleaner in on the other side, kind of fold it up on itself and twist it so that you don't have that extra wire sticking out. And so that's your little luminary and then in your kit you also have um, a battery operated candle um, so um, parents you might want to help with this because it is a little bit hard to turn the switch on there but turn that little candle on and put it in your luminary and there you go so All right, kids, so this is just a reminder that um, to never be scared, um, Jesus lives in us. Jesus is the light of the world. He lives inside of us. Um, and then it's our job as Jesus' disciples to um, take our light and shine it to the world, you know, to tell others about Jesus, to embody um, Jesus and what he stood for, and just let your light shine for all to see. Yep, and so I know this is our, our last day of Vacation Bible School. Um, we sure miss all you guys, and we're looking forward to when we can get together again. But thanks for being with us this week. We've really had a fun time, and we hope you have too. Go and let your light shine, guys. Bye. Bye. Welcome back for the last day of VBS. I see you survived the science, and survived the crafts, and survived the skits for the three days. <laughs> now let's get back to science and having fun. Let's get to today's science project, shall we? Where we're going to talk about what happens to a candle when it gets smothered. Oh, it's going to be fun. But, before we get started, we must remember the safety protocols. Goggles, check. Gloves, check. Long sleeve coat, check and check. Now, remember friends, if you are going to be in the lab and you are going to be performing science, all mad scientists must have an adult supervising your science experiments. So. Do not try this without your parents, friends. Okay, you ready? Let's get started. Oh, and in this experiment, we're going to be using fire. So, if you are going to do this experiment sometime, never do this alone. Fire is dangerous. Even mad scientists know that fire can harm you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, friends, here's what we're going to do. All we have for this is a simple mason jar, a regular candle, nothing special, some blue food coloring, a lighter, 
a bowl that's clear so you can see through it. And we're going to put some water in it. But first, we're going to do something really important, which is anchor down our candle first. So we're going to take this new candle, and we're going to take and we're going to light it. Okay, now you see how it's lit, and you see the wax is starting to melt. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it upside down. See how the candle wax is falling? Look at that. There we go. Yeah, we're going to get a little more there. There we go. Just a little bit more. Just a little more. One more drop. There we go. Now, we're going to put this here. There we go. And we're going to blow it out. Now, we're going to let that sit for a minute, and we're going to let it dry. This wax right here is going to harden, and it's going to stick the candle to the bottom of the bowl. Then, we can move it around as much as we want, and it won't go nowhere. Okay, that's, that should be good enough. Yep, look at that. It's nice and sturdy. We're just moving a little bit from side to side, and it's not really budging, so that's perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put some water in here. I'll be right back. Okay, do you see the water in here? Great. This water is in here, but I didn't fill it up very much, and I did not get it on the candle. you got to be careful and not get it on the candle, especially at the top. Otherwise, the wick here will not burn, and we need it to burn here in a minute. So, let's go ahead and get started by putting food coloring in. Just put plenty of drops. All right, that should be enough. Let's see how that works, okay? Now, I'm going to get my trusty stirrer, and I'm just going to stir it around. And the reason we put food coloring in is so you can see when the water moves here in just a minute, because it's going to move a little bit. Do you see the color change? Yeah? Good. Okay, now, now that that's done, this is still in place, real nice and secure. We're going to do another thing. We're going to light the candle again, okay? You ready? Let's watch. All right, we're going to let it get nice and bright and get it nice and big. You want the flame up real high so you can see it well, okay? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this jar and we're going to put it over top and you're going to watch what happens to it, okay? You ready? Here we go. All right. Do you see how the water level went down and the candle is out? The reason this happened is because inside this jar, we locked in all of the air that's in there and no new air can come in, nor can the old air go out. So what happened here is the candle has a flame on it and the flame is doing something called combustion. And when that happens, it takes the carbon molecules and the oxygen molecules which is what helps fire burn. Oxygen is required to, for a fire to burn, and it converts all of that through combustion to create carbon dioxide, or CO2. So, when that happened, and all the oxygen was no longer present, and it was only carbon dioxide, then the flame went out, because it had no more oxygen to burn. And when that all of this happened, there was a change in temperature and air pressure and all of that. And what ends up happening is you have the water gets sucked in because it creates a vacuum with all this that happened. It's super cool. Now watch, watch what happens when I lift it up. Watch the water come back out. Whoa! Did you see that? This is so cool. Isn't science fun, friends? 
But the reason this is so important is because, like the candle, we need oxygen. Like the candle, we have Jesus. And we have to show Jesus to the world, otherwise we can smother the light that is within us. That light is Jesus. Remember how we said yesterday that Jesus was the light? Well, today we're showing what happens when you don't let your light shine. What happens is that we put out our flame. We put out the light of Jesus within us. And then we can't share it because then it's not there. We have to make sure that we don't smother the candle. But good news, friends. When we do smother the candle, if we do, Jesus lights right back up within us. Because Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus loves us and all of creation. And it is because of that love that we can share who Jesus is. Because Jesus saved us all. And now, let us go share with the world that message. Let us not let our candles be extinguished. Let's let it shine so all can see Jesus within us in the world. I hope you've had fun learning about science and Jesus and the Bible. I hope that you've had fun these past three days. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have science to attend to. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. You ain't ready for next time. Maybe. Just maybe I'll see you again soon.